What's up everyone, Thrall's Mel here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I am back with a collection update number 80, I believe. It's pretty crazy I've done this many, almost 100, Jesus. Anyway, got a bunch of new stuff here. I uh, hit up Shadow Kingdom Records Distro and found a lot of cool stuff. Some stuff for future retro reviews in terms of more obscure underground bands. And just some stuff that I was missing in general. And got some other cool stuff at the end that I can't wait to show you guys as well. Some extra stuff that I picked up as well as eh, something a bit bigger as far as music. Anyway, let's get into this because this is a very big stack. Interloper, Search Party. This is the debut full length from this California-based progressive metalcore band. I believe that's what the style is. At least that's what I saw in terms of their descriptors. Anyway, this features former members of The Faceless and Rings of Saturn, which believe me, you can find a lot of ex-members of those bands at this point. But this is pretty interesting. It's not necessarily my style. I like the more progressive elements, but there is a lot of stuff that reminds me of like, mid-2000s metalcore, which eh, I like it, but not as much. It feels kind of dated and it's not old enough to be nostalgic to me just yet. When they're at their most progressive, namely the songs Dreamlands and Idle Years, I really dug it. I don't like the clean vocals on here. They just feel very processed. They don't feel very natural at all. And uh, a lot of the stuff, it kind of sounds like uh, a slightly more progressive trivium, which there was a point where I really liked Trivium, and uh, most of their newer stuff I just can't seem to get into. But granted, it may not be necessarily my style. I think there's some great musicianship on here. The guys playing in this band are clearly very talented musicians. You can definitely hear it in all the you know, lush lead work and very technical writing. It's pretty good. It's just not really my style, but I still encourage you to check it out and form your own opinions. So yeah, check it out. Iron Stream, The Prophecy. This. I believe came out in 1991. This was kind of difficult to look up because this is essentially just the English translation for both the name of the band and the title of the album. This is a Russian thrash band. I got this in the Metalhead box and I could not tell you what any of their albums are called because all of it is in Cyrillic and I don't know how to read Cyrillic. So that made it pretty difficult. I know this is their debut. I had to look around. This is the Stormspell reissue, also on Days of Yore. Uh, this came out in 2021, at least they reissued it, and I guess it's limited to 300 copies. This is, uh, well, I mean, it does say uh, Russian answer to Metallica. Not necessarily, but I can definitely see why they said that because there are a lot of Metallica Bay Area stylings on here. The songs Light Unto My Path and Ready For Boarding both feature a riff that sounds almost exactly like the main riff of uh, the bridge on Freight Ends of Sanity. It was just something I noticed, but I mean, as far as like the overall Metallica vibe, it's definitely not vocally. Vocally, this guy uh, does kind of a more like a standard sort of growl. Maybe, I guess you could say like early James Hatfield, but he does these high-pitched yelps, which uh, light under my path again. These these things are a little goofy. It's it's almost too goofy to be taken seriously. And, you know, the production here is very raw, even though this is a reissue and probably a remaster. Uh, it still definitely sounds like it was recorded in, well, actually like 1983 rather than 91, but, you know, Russia different. I mean, this was still Soviet Union. I mean, they even let you know by going the last track, Soviet Utopia, which is a strange track. It sounds like a old drinking song, and it sounds like they're more or less kind of making fun of the Soviet Union, which that was pretty taboo, so gotta respect uh, the ballsiness of that one. But uh, yeah, this was pretty decent. There's some pretty cool songs in here, but yeah, sometimes the vocals really took me out of it. But this is a pretty interesting one I got in the Metalhead box. This is definitely one of the more interesting ones in terms of the, the rarity and the obscurity of it. So uh, definitely check this out. It's an interesting listen for sure. All the lyrics are in Russian, so uh, don't worry about cheesy platitudes. I don't think most of our fan base will even understand them. It'll just sound like someone yelling. So yeah, check it out. It's a pretty interesting listen. Shibboleth. This is their self-titled debut from 2010. This is the other one I got in the Metalhead box. And this is, as I pretty much guessed it, black metal. This is really good black metal, though. I uh, was kind of surprised. I was, you know, figuring it would be like kind of a, just an obscure one they throw in there, and I guess it is. But the songs on here are 
really, really good. It's raw, but it's well thought out. There's a lot of cool dynamics on it. The song Subterranean on here has fierce, immortal vibes. And I love the overall atmosphere on here. It has, again, a good raw sound, but there are enough dynamics and it's mixed well. So not everything sort of just bleeds through as noise. And I gotta say, there's a lot of melodic hooks on here. I was really surprised by that. I mean, just looking at this, it kind of looks like it'd be more of a bare bones sort of stripped down black metal project, but there are catchy melodies. There are interesting song dynamics. It's not just a static blast the entire time. Vocals are a little bit one note, but I mean, it kind of works with the atmosphere because they kind of sound really staticky, I guess. But yeah, overall, this was a pretty cool listen and I definitely want to check out more by this band. I think they have two or three other releases, so I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for it. So yeah, if you're looking for some cool raw black metal with legit hooks, definitely check this out. Asphyxiator, Trapped Between Two Worlds. This is the lone album from this UK death metal act that came out in 1997. This is the Vic Records reissue that came out in 2020. And of course, it being a one-off obscure death metal band, I kind of want to say if most of this ran for a retro review, but very similar to Benediction, Bolt Thrower, a little bit of US death metal in there as well, like some Cannibal Corpse vibes, a little bit of Morbid Angel, Pretty solid stuff. Um, I definitely don't want to go too far into this, but I really enjoyed this. And it's interesting that this came out in 97, because this sounds like it would have come out in 1992, but you know, bands form when they form. Interesting stuff, not gonna go too far into it, but definitely check it out. There will be a link below as there will be a link below for all this stuff in the description. So yeah, definitely check this out. And yeah, this one's gonna go on the uh, list for stuff to retro review, because I really dug this. Gorgast, Covered in Skin EP. This came out in 2013. This is the most recent release from this German death metal slash death grind act. They've been on hiatus since 2015, and I don't know much more in terms of why they're on hiatus or you know if they have gotten back together recently. But this is my first exposure to this band, and I checked out you know a couple of songs. Like, yeah, I'd definitely check this out. It was a nice price. And this is definitely more old school death metal really not many grind elements at all on this. Now granted, this is only three songs. You have two originals and a cover of Grave's Soulless, which, you know, that's not like my favorite era of Grave. I prefer the earlier stuff, but they did a really good job. Really good dramatic vocals on here. Like they're definitely kind of like over the top and just extra gurgly in spots. But, you know, seeing as there's only two original tracks, there's really not much to go on. You know, the tracks, might be different than the earlier stuff, which I haven't heard, so I can't really compare them to anything. It's very straightforward, groovy, old school death metal, you know, obituary, jungle rot, that sort of thing. Very meat and potatoes, we definitely say that a lot, but that is pretty accurate with this. I like it, though I think I wanna hear some earlier stuff just to actually compare it to something. But you know, for a three song EP, it's pretty good, and you should definitely check it out. Hell Ripper. Black Arts and Alchemy EP. This came out in 2019 on Reaper Metal Productions. This is one man, Black and Thrash Act. Uh, I loved their last album, it was a year ender for me, and this is me backpedaling and getting more of their stuff. And this is a five song EP, and every song whoops ass. Pretty much once again, including the awesome cover at the end, Iron Heads, which I believe was originally done by Running Wild. All these songs whoop ass, it's just, fast, riffy, very just high energy black and thrash, and it's so much damn fun to listen to. I kind of like the vocals a little bit better on this one just because they aren't as out front as they were on the last one. Really, really dug that album though, and I really dug this. This is definitely a band I need to get more by because it's just fast as hell almost all the time, but not in a boring way. It doesn't get monotonous because the riffs are always really interesting great clever writing and for a one-man band like generally this is one of those things where i look for what the guy might be less proficient at and he seems like he's proficient at everything in here because even the drums are tight he's doing some really cool fills in here and definitely maintaining that fast d beat the entire time so at least he's a workhorse for damn sure definitely check this out check out anything by hell ripper i guess because everything that i've heard on youtube and then this and the new album it all sounds absolutely badass and I just need to get physical media for it. So yeah, definitely check this out. It whoops ass. 
Okay, got a pair here from Hydravein. This is a new one for me, but I kind of picked them up on a whim after checking them out in Shadow Kingdom's distro because they had a lot of cool stuff. Anyway, this is their debut, Rather Death Than False of Faith. It's kind of a mouthful. And their follow-up, After the Dream. Now, these are the only two full lengths they ever put out, and this is a UK thrash band. And these two albums are very different. And I'm not just talking about the logos and the cover art because, yeah, the original logo is eh, well, almost kind of on par with the original album cover. I don't know what's going on there, but it, it does look kind of goofy. But this is just straight up raw thrash. Really screams like early Slayer worship, and I'm talking like, you know, Show No Mercy, Hell Awaits, Haunting the Chapel, like definitely more in that era. And production-wise, they definitely didn't have the same level of production Slayer had back then, which even their production was not necessarily the best, but this is really raw in spots, and in some songs, it's just really bad, like super muddy. The guitars, granted, are crunchier in hell, but the tone just sounds dirty, and it really takes away from like any sense of melody on here. Right to Die, especially, sounds like they're playing through a busted speaker, busted amps, busted everything. It just sounds, it sounds busted. But it sucks because it's actually a pretty solid song on here. I'd say kind of comparable to Onslaught in some fashion, but this one's pretty good. Definitely could have used, you know, more work in the studio. And this is a remaster and, you know, they, I guess, can only clean it up so much. Now this one definitely was different. Uh, the vocals were a little bit different on this one. They still had a bit of like a thrashy shout to them, but there was definitely more like singing on it, like a little bit more 80s wailing. Changed the logo, and the album art is actually really early album art from one Dan Seagrave. So yeah, pretty cool, because this came out in 88, I believe, or 89. So yeah, that puts it right around the uh, same time as Morbid Angel, and a little bit of Ultras of Madness. So yeah, you could definitely see his style is a lot different now, but this is definitely him. Musically, a little bit more mature, a little bit more experimental. They definitely were, you know, trying some different things. This wasn't all like full tilt boogie thrash. There was definitely more technical play, more weird melodies, but sometimes the songs weren't as hooky. Both of these are really interesting albums and both of these, I think I want to say for retro reviews, just give me a little bit of history in the band because I like what I heard and it'd be a fun obscure band to cover because why not, man? I like old school 80s thrash and this was pretty good. So if you've never heard of these guys at all, definitely check them out, pretty solid releases. Crips, Descending Era of Putrefaction. This came out in 2018, this is a compilation from this Finnish death metal act. I have been a fan for a while, I believe since Remnants of Expansion, that was the first one I really got into by them. This is a compilation of their Open the Crypt demo, a seven inch that they did, and a rehearsal from 2013. And it's really cool, like, hearing the evolution of the band. Like, I have all their studio albums, but this is a little bit earlier, at least with the uh, demo, which honestly is way more like straightforward Finnish death metal, but, you know, not like full board, like Death Doom. They really didn't get to that till a little bit later. The, first four tracks are from the demo and it's a little bit more up-tempo a little bit more straightforward death metal heavier than hell and I gotta say I really like the murky production on it but when you get down to that seven inch that thing is even murkier and filthier and that's where you start hearing the death doom side of them really start to come out and the rehearsals absolutely awesome too there's even like a little weird vocal freak out towards the end which I thought was odd but you know cool I just like Finnish Death Metal. Finnish Death Metal is awesome, and there's definitely more Finnish Death Metal in this pile, I know for damn sure. But yeah, this is absolutely killer. I love this band, and this pretty much continues that streak because it's really cool hearing that uh, evolution of their sound over time. Killer stuff, if you see this compilation, I strongly recommend getting it if you're a fan of Crips at all in terms of their current work or any of their work, honestly. Just get it. It's good. Check it out. Obscure Infinity. Evocation of Chaos. This came out in 2019 on FDA Records, much like most of their releases. This is a compilation of unreleased material, splits, demos, live tracks. It's like 16 tracks and over an hour long, and it's absolutely awesome. I love this band. I've been jamming a lot of them. This was just really awesome, very dynamic, 
death metal, lots of different vocal styles throughout this entire compilation, but kind of throughout their career too. They touch on elements of melodic death metal as well as like just straight up old school death metal, a little bit of that battle heavy death metal like bull thrower, tons of that sort of groove in here. Just a solid band and it was really cool just to hear all these songs that I had not heard from them. I have all their studio albums and I want to say almost all of these tracks were new to me which is killer for a compilation in my book. Great guitar work, drum work is absolutely awesome. I pretty much loved almost every track on here except for the ones that I already had or were just like you know, live tracks. Granted, I love the live tracks, I just don't put live tracks on my phone. But killer stuff, if you've never heard Obscure Infinity, I think any of their albums is a place to start because I think that's just a solid band. But I would definitely pick up this because you get a fair amount of variety on here. Definitely check this out, check out anything by this band, they are awesome. Silent Scream from the darkest depths of the imagination. This is the lone studio full length from this band, came out in 1992, though this is the 2016 reissue on Tribunal slash Dive Bomb Records. And of course, because it's a lone studio release and it's an obscure band, I definitely want to do a retro review of it, but I will tell you that this is some awesome death thrash. Definitely for fans of like Morbid Saint, Demolition Hammer, Possessed, Early Death, little bit of Vader in there too, all that killer stuff, and pretty well remastered too. Again, I'm not going to go too far into this because this is definitely one I want to do for a retro review because I've heard a lot of people talk about this album and I finally picked it up and I can see why people talked about it. It's pretty damn good. So yeah, definitely check this out. It will be also in the music down below, but I definitely have put this on a list for a retro review and we'll definitely get to it because we're going to get back to more of those. If you know you haven't got that, then I'm hinting towards more retro reviews in the future. We definitely are, and this one will be on it. So definitely check this out. Triumvir Foul, Spiritual Bloodshed. This came out in 2017. This is the second album from this two-man disgusting death metal band from Portland, Oregon, where lots of disgusting death metal bands come from. Now, I would go into all the different bands that these two members are in, but there's a lot. There are a ton of bands that both of these guys are into, which might explain why these guys don't put out music as frequently as they probably could. They got a lot of other responsibilities. Anyway, this is some filthy, dissonant, ugly death metal, and I dig it. Pretty much, it almost kind of has that weird atmosphere that Portal has, except this is 100% more accessible and won't wake you wake up, you know, from night terrors or anything. Loads of just weird angular riffs, frantic drums. The drums in here sounds like he is just beating the ever-living shit out of the kit. Like there's just no love or respect for that kit. That thing was probably thrown away after they were done recording this. Vocally, they do a lot to add to the atmosphere too. There's screams, there's growls, there's ominous chanting. Really all adds to the overall atmosphere of this really badass, but kind of creepy death metal album. I have their other full length and the last EP they put out, and I don't know, I'm kind of torn. I like that first one a lot, but this is also really good. And I think each album gets like a little bit more intense atmosphere wise, but this is some solid stuff. If you like your death metal creepier in hell, definitely check this out because it's really good. Vulture, Victim to the Blade. This is the 2016 reissue on High Roller Records of Vulture's first demo. And we just covered Vulture recently in a review. The new album is really, really good. And so is this. Actually, so are all their albums, honestly. I really like this band. It's campy, it's over the top, it kind of has that 80s horror movie camp to it. And this is pretty much where it started, and it started off awesome. There are only four tracks on here, three originals, and one badass thrashed out cover of Judas Priest Rapid Fire. And they absolutely kill that song. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But all three of those other songs are high energy, well written, loads of just catchy melodies. You kind of have this bridge between speed metal and thrash metal because it feels maybe a little too dark and heavy for just speed metal. But at the same time, the vocals and the almost kind of bouncy feel to it kind of keep it, I don't know, like upbeat, I guess. 
But I mean, like, oh, the subject matter is, you know, it's like dark horror movie stuff. The vocals, of course, are outrageous. You still have no idea when that singer's gonna belt out one of those high pitch wails. The guitar work is absolutely crushing on here. Love this stuff. This is an awesome four song EP. You'll fly through this thing and hopefully just hit replay because it was that much fun to listen to. Solid stuff. I think I still have one other EP of theirs that I'm missing and believe me, I'm looking for it. But yeah, super glad I found this. This was tons of fun and you should check it out. All right, we got a weird one here. We have the After Party Massacre soundtrack. Now this, again, was another one that I found in Shadow Kingdom and um, I can't remember the last time I actually bought a soundtrack. It's been a minute. But I saw this, I saw what all was on it and I had to get it. Now I've never seen this movie. I had to look up the trailer and it looks more like softcore porn and trauma kind of combined, There's like strippers, uh, I think Incantation's actually in it because they're on the soundtrack twice for the same song, but one of them's live, and actually the live version sounds amazing. Absolved in Blood, I believe I have that on like a compilation or a single. But all this is just kind of underground death metal and thrash metal acts with interesting little skits and excerpts from the film, again, that I've never seen in between the songs. But you have original stuff on here too. Uh, Denial Fiend, you have songs from Estuary, Grave Hill doing a cover of ACDC's If You Want Blood, You Got It. It's uh, appropriately over the top and campy as hell, but I mean, you know, it, why not? It's just a fun song. Tons of bands on it, which is why I picked it up, and some of these songs are actually just originals to this, so this might be the only place you can really find them unless they re-released them on like a seven inch or something like that later. But I'm gonna have to sit down and watch the movie, I guess. You know, not just because it's got naked chicks all throughout it, that has nothing to do with that. Or some things to do, most things to do with it. Anyway, this is a pretty cool soundtrack, regardless if you've never seen the film. And if you like underground death metal, this is completely loaded with it. And the skits in between are actually pretty fucking funny. So yeah, definitely check this out. It's uh, weird, I don't know, I might just leave a trailer for the film down below because it has a little bit of the music in there too. So yeah, if you uh, are allowed to watch it because it's an over 18 video, check it out. And of course, check this out too. The soundtrack's the main thing. It's pretty badass. All right, we have the Chasm of Aeons four-way split between Cryptic Shift, Replicant, Inoculation, and Astral Tomb. And I pretty much got this namely because I love two of those bands for damn sure. Cryptic Shift and Inoculation are both badass. The Cryptic Shift song I absolutely loved. It's pretty much what they do, except shortened down. It's not like one long track like you know the album, which I thought was really good. It's just, that's a long track. This one is pretty much condensing it down to all the things I really like. The technical, thrashy death metal they do. Really solid. Replicant? Pretty good song, wasn't the biggest fan of the vocals, but I like the music. Inoculation, I really like this song, Xerthenius, but that song is also on their new album, which is absolutely amazing, and you should definitely check that out too. And then the one I had the most questions about was Astral Tomb, and the song Transcendence from the Mortal Plane Guided by a Familiar Phantasm. That is a long song title. Now, this one sounds like it was not finished. Like, it sounds like they recorded in front of a Fisher Price microphone because the production on this song is really kind of bad. It just doesn't sound like it was ready to go on the split, but they had to put it on there because they were on a deadline or something. What sucks more, though, is musically, from what I could make out, it sounded like it would have been really awesome if they had actually, like, mixed it and mastered it and, you know, fixed it because it definitely needs some work because you really had to like listen in closely to hear certain aspects and then other aspects were just way too loud. It just sounded bad. Like, not like, you know, like, oh, it's, you know, murky sounding and, you know, more analog. No, it just sounded mixed bad. But the music sounded like it would've been really good. So I definitely want to check out more by Astral Tomb because I don't want this to be the only thing that I base all my listening on when it comes down to that band. But yeah, pretty solid four-way split. You got some really solid bands on here. One that just did record their song as well, but I really dug this and awesome album cover too. But yeah, definitely check this out. Solid stuff. In Human Condition, Rat God. 
This is the debut album from this Florida death metal band featuring ex-members of Massacre, in case you couldn't figure out why that logo looked kind of familiar. Well, you know, the sound overall is pretty damn familiar. Now, this features Terry Butler, namely, of Massacre Obituaries, formerly Six Feet Under, ton of different bands, Death of Horse, and some members of The Absence, as well as some other bands in here. And this was essentially the guys that were in Massacre, and then they had that big falling out with uh, Cam Lee and I guess Massacre still going on but these guys decided to form their version of it granted with a different name because Cam Lee owns the rights to that name so yeah it's it a little you know, confusing there but all you need to know is this is awesome Florida death metal straight up old school groovier in hell vocals almost kind of had like a hardcore like delivery the drummer is also the vocalist on here which I always think that's kind of cool well produced Meat and potatoes, no frills. This is, again, like obituary, early death, lots of jungle rot sort of feels to it. Big hooks, you know, they don't really dick around very much the atmosphere. They're just there to bring the riffs and the punishment, and I dig it. This actually came with some guitar picks too, but I left them upstairs. But yeah, this is a solid release. Strongly recommend hitting up their band camp and just getting this. And of course, links to the music down below. Definitely check it out if you're a fan of old school death metal. This should sound very familiar to you because it is rooted deep in that early death metal sound from Tampa. So yeah, definitely check this out. Solid stuff. On all Noth Rack, Total Fucking Necro. This is a reissue on Metal Blade Records of their first two demos, as well as some bonus tracks. I'm a huge and all Noth Rack fan, and honestly, I'd never heard their original demos, so of course I had to pick this up. And this is very different from where they are now. The production is very different. It's very grating and noisy, kind of staticky. The drums are beyond an obvious drum machine. And Dave Hunt sounds remarkably different on here. It's almost all growls and shrieks and howls. There's none of the big epic vocals that he usually does in terms of like lifting up choruses that was something that definitely came in later but this is kind of interesting to listen to i felt like i was listening to like an old black metal album from like the 90s and i believe this originally came out in 2001. now they did throw on some extra stuff on here they did do a cover of demisterius dom Sathanas, and honestly they did a pretty good job i would say it's even more raw than the original though but I guess that's kind of an all-Nathrax thing, or at least it really was on this one. They're still incredibly raw now, it's just more explosive and more refined, I think. And I think McKenney is definitely better in terms of production now. I like this, totally different than what they're doing now, and I like what they're doing now especially. But I still recommend checking this out. And of course, if you're a collector of all things in all-Nathrax and you don't have this one, definitely check it out, because it's definitely pretty damn interesting and, and good. It's good too. Just check it out. An Archon, Phantasmagorical Personification of the Death Temple. You have no idea how many times I stumbled on that title. Anyway, after that really long title, this is a Brazilian death metal band. This is their most recent offering. It came out last year, but this is the reissue on CD from Dembebir Morty Records this year. And I know of this band. In fact, I think I have a t-shirt for this band that was given to me, and this is actually my first time sitting down and listening to them. And from what I gather, the stuff before this album is a lot different. The stuff before this album is more straightforward, old school death metal meets maybe brutal death metal. This is way more atmospheric, way more uh, dissonant, Similar to Incantation, but take that distance to another level like Ulcerate, which is a label mate there, or a band like The Ominous Circle, for those that know who they are. It's creepy, dark, very cavernous, loads of reverb on the guitars. And the songs are long and kind of like haunting, and they definitely explore a lot of different dynamics. But they kind of lay on that reverb thing a little bit too much. They kind of repeat the same atmosphere a little bit too much, which I mean, it's cool. It kind of, you know, keeps with the entire feel of the album, but I kind of wanted to hear some different kinds of riffs on here. And after a while, that muddy guitar tone, it didn't distinguish a lot of the melodies as much. But this was pretty solid. And this is honestly my first exposure to this band. And 
I have nothing to really compare it to in terms of their back catalog, so I'm gonna have to check out some of their stuff and at least compare maybe their old sound to their new sound. But I did like this. This was pretty damn good. I picked this up on a whim and it was a pretty fun listen. So if you like atmospheric death metal and uh, that, that's pretty much it because that's exactly what this is. Definitely check this out because it's pretty damn solid. Pertinence, member of Immortal Damnation. This is the 2011 reissue of their 1992 full length album. This was this Finnish death metal band's debut album. It also includes their original EP that came out before this and a demo back when they were known as Pertinence Avulsion. They just dropped one entire word there. This is pretty similar to uh, most of the death metal that came out in the early 90s in Finland. I have been actually trying to find this and some of their other stuff for a while now. And I was gonna get some of their later stuff, but I wanted to kind of start at the start if I could. And I was fortunate that my local record store actually had a copy of this and it was brand new. So it was like, well, about time to start. And this is pretty straightforward finished death metal. Definitely has like a little bit more like American tropes. There's definitely stuff on here that sounds more like Morbid Angel, maybe a little bit of like Candle Corpse, but you still have that death doomy sound that is very much associated with Finland, like early amorphous, sentenced, well, early sentence at least. And in between all the low growls, occasionally you get like a demolich burp. I guess that's the only way I can really describe those vocals, kind of bullfrogish. But yeah, this is a pretty solid release. There's some interesting interludes on here, which I didn't think were overly necessary, but musically, pretty solid. I definitely want to check out more by this band for sure, but I'm glad I finally got a hold of their debut album because I've been trying to get a lot of old Finnish death metal and yeah, this is a solid addition to that little uh, hunt. So yeah, if you have never checked out this band before, definitely check them out. This is a pretty solid debut and I'm going to be on the hunt for other stuff from them because they did break up for a while and then reformed and I think started putting out stuff around like 2013. So yeah, just gotta check out that stuff and see how it compares to this. But yeah, definitely check this out though. Pretty solid debut. Sadistic Forest, Old Obscure Remains. This is the new EP from this Finnish death metal band. A Little bit of a theme here, I guess. This actually features the former bassist of Hooded Menace and this is straight up old school death metal. Four tracks on here. Very dry production. I gotta start off with that because I was kind of shocked that, you know, how dry it was. Because most of the time, Finnish death metal is, you know, very doom laden. They definitely want a big full sound, kind of murky and filthy. Like, that's generally the sound I associate with Finnish death metal. This is very dry and I don't know, like, it, it kind of bothers me because the guitar tone feels like it should be less crisp than it is and it's almost kind of grating and it could use some more low end like you can hear the bass but it doesn't really resonate very much it's interesting to hear like the thrash elements in here though there are some really thrashy sections in this again not something i always associate with finished death metal but overall like this was only kind of okay like the first two songs i thought were just kind of there and i didn't think they really started experimenting a little bit more and trying to broaden the sound and use more dynamics until the last two tracks and there's some really interesting uh, little moments in here. There's a weird breakdown in the song Nile. Uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. It kind of just sounds odd. It involves a blast beat and just, I don't know, weird single notes. And then just when you think the album's over on the song Water's Black, all of a sudden at the end there is like a You Suffer sort of blurb just right at the end and then the CD's over. Interesting. I don't know if it was like intended to be a you suffer thing. It sounds like it's a you suffer little nod at the end. I think that's kind of cool if it is. If not, I don't know. I kind of wonder why it's there. But I don't know. I need some more time with this one. But this one's only kind of okay. But I'm so glad I checked it out at least. And I mean, they had me with Hooded Menace. I absolutely love that band. So of course I wanted to check this one out if it had an X member in it. It's okay. But. Check it out anyway, form your own opinions. This might not be my thing, it could be your thing. You'll only find out if you listen to it. Check it out. Coffin Rot, Dawn of Decay. This is the compilation of their early demos as well as some songs from the split they did with the band Mulder. 
And I definitely wanted to check this out because I'm a huge fan of their debut, A Monument to the Dead. I actually reviewed that one forever ago, and they actually thanked me for it, which was really cool. That was like an early moment of a band actually thanking us for spreading the word about their album. And, you know, that kind of resonated with me. So I saw they were putting this out, and I definitely want to check it out because I really like that album. And hearing the raw demo versions of it, which they recorded really well, was absolutely awesome. It has, you know, that demo feel, that kind of more live feel, but I like how these really sound. They're mixed really well. They're definitely way more compressed. They don't have all the, the big reverby sound that's on their album, where it's not that big, but bigger than this. But I don't know, it was just, you know, more personal, I guess. I don't know, it sounds more gritty this way. But the real standouts for me were the songs I hadn't heard, which were the split with Mulder, and they did some awesome songs, especially Unmarked Shallow Grave. Holy shit, that song whoops ass. But I absolutely love their cover of Cancer's Hung, Drawn, and Quartered. It absolutely whooped ass. But yeah, this is a cool little collector's nod. Hopefully they're working on something new because I definitely want to check out a new album by those guys because they're really fucking good. Definitely check this band out. If I didn't tell you, they are from Portland, Oregon as well, where death metal bands just grow on trees, apparently. At the least they're pretty much mostly good, so... Yeah, yeah, keep feeding those trees. Those are good trees. But yeah, definitely check this out. Check out their full length too, Monument to the Dead. That's really, really good as well. But if you want to hear the demo versions, definitely check this out as well. Check them both out. Check out anything they put out. That's generally going to be good. Check this out though. And finally, for at least this stack of individual CDs, we have Morbific, Ominous Sleep of Putridity. This is a three-piece Finnish death metal band. This is their debut full length on Head Split Records, at least on CD. And this is some really gnarly, gritty, murky, filthy, old school stuff. And I really, really dig it. Now I had jammed this album on YouTube uh, a while ago and I really got into its old school sound. There's tons of autopsy worship on here. And getting a chance to hear it, you know, on some really good speakers down here, <laughs> the atmospheric stuff they throw in here, it's occasionally kind of disgusting, especially the opening track, the title track. It has this long intro of what sounds like Goblin playing synths and someone stirring the largest pot of mac and cheese possible. It might just be like worms and shit, but I don't know. That, that's where my head went. But the sound of this band is absolutely filthy. The bass and the guitar sort of blend in together as this wall o murk But... It's not so much to where it's just completely pure mud. It's still like a really good sound. Drums are very punky in here. Again, that fierce autopsy sort of worship. I think the picture of the guy is he was wearing an autopsy shirt. May have telegraphed it a little bit, but I get it. I love autopsy too. There are really cool death doom moments, which again, that's what I associate with Finnish death metal. Sawmill in the Mist has a absolutely disgusting death doom break in it with some really clever melodies in it. You got the deep guttural vocals. I mean, this is pretty much a complete package of old school death metal and almost a demo quality sound throughout. It just kind of gives it a very raw feel and I have a feeling this is exactly what you're gonna get live in terms of their sound. Definitely check this out. This is an absolutely killer debut. The more I keep jamming it, the more I'm really digging it. So I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that is starting to creep its way into my year-end possibilities in terms of stuff that'll be on my list, but, oh, man, this is gonna be a tough one. But yeah, definitely check this out. It's absolutely filthy, but in, like, the right ways, in the death metal right ways. Check it out, it's good. All right, now let's get down to the bigger stuff at the end, and we've definitely done uh, this band at the end before. We've got Black Sabbath, the ultimate collector's edition of sabotage and might as well go through it super deluxe i screwed that up anyway we have this awesome book filled with all sorts of cool stuff in here i haven't really flipped through it i try to keep these things as intact as possible but i imagine you get the whole story behind this album it was definitely wrought with a lot of uh, external distractions and such, lawsuits, fun stuff. They were definitely in a rough period, but they wrote a killer album during this period. You know, got a cool 
picture book, Ozzy looking disappointed on horseback. Some really cool live shots. And got this killer poster, which I'm gonna be very careful unfolding. Because I don't know if I'll ever put it up because again I want to keep all this intact, but that is a pretty cool promo. And then of course we have the albums itself, which they do come in <laughs> that whole little sleeve thing giving us CD collectors the whole extra vinyl experience there with the wrapping. But we have a two disc live album, Live in North America 1973 part one and part two, pretty damn cool. And a Japanese single for Am I Going Insane, which I don't like that song, but they have Hole in the Sky on here, which is pretty cool. But it's just kind of interesting that, you know, they decided to throw that in there. I don't know, it's a cool little novelty, I guess. You know, cool cover on it though. But yeah, I'm still wondering why they did Sabotage before they did Master of Reality. Uh, that was the one that I thought was going to be coming out next. It just seems like it would have made sense. I mean, you know, you had Paranoid and uh, Volume 4. It's kind of like right in between there. Why not do it? I don't know. Either way, I'm not really complaining because Sabotage is a badass album. It's, well, I mean, if you watched our Sabbath ranking, it was definitely up there for me. The Writ is one of my favorite Black Sabbath songs, and... One of the few that Ozzy contributed uh, lyrics to, because most of those lyrics were geezer, but I always thought that was kind of cool. And then the other things that I got were these. These are old tour books, and I got them for Slayer. Now, there's another one over here. That's why I said books, but I wanted to gonna do these one at a time. Now, I believe these were for South of Heaven, and the other one is Seasons in the Abyss. But yeah, way back when, there were actually these little books you could get at the show. And, you know, they would show you all these cool pictures and the different stops. Looks like they even had the entire staff listed here. They don't do that anymore. And I'll just show you the other one here. This is more for the uh, season the Abyss tour, which, I mean, jeez, look at that shit. Awesome. Way back when, just awesome shit. But yeah, that was something I saw in my record store as well as this bad boy, which is an actual all access pass from 1987 Rain in Pain tour. I was nine, so yeah, I didn't make that one. Something about uh, Mom would never let me go see Slayer when I was nine years old. Not that she wasn't cool, it's just that I didn't think I knew who Slayer was at that point. But yeah, I picked this one up as well. I think, you know, I bought it for like 15 bucks, 10 bucks, but just a cool little piece of Slayer history. So yeah, I always give my eyes open for all sorts of other weird stuff like that. But yeah, that knocks out another one. This one is a pretty large collection update, but this was really cool and I really enjoyed showing those Slayer concert books because they don't do that stuff anymore. They don't even really give you like a cool flyer anymore. That's just like, no, it stays on the wall here and you can't have it unless you snag it off the wall, which I've definitely done before. But yeah, I'm um, gonna continue jamming more Campbell Corpse and writing down stuff for that near impossible ranking, which I'm, it's, Oh, that one's gonna be tough. But I'm enjoying it because I get to sit around and listen to Cannibal Corpse and that is always fun. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon, so if you'd like to help us out there, there will be a link below amongst all the other links for music and such. And if you would like to purchase a t-shirt, hit us up on thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. We would love to sell you a t-shirt or two or eight or 20 however many you want, you know, well, or however many we got. Either way, buy a t-shirt, I'm sure it'll look good on you, tell your friends about the channel, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much my entire spiel here, so with that, I thank you all for watching, and we will catch you later.